CFL Combine one-on-one -on -one with Edmonton Elks head coach and general manager Chris Jones. Chris, Taylor Cornelius is your starting quarterback going into next season, but you've got a talented guy that you found at this Combine last year in Trey Ford. How much competition is there going to be in training camp? Well, I mean, there's always competition. I mean, uh, when there's not competition, that's not a good thing. So for every position that we have, uh, we're going to be competing. So uh, quarterback's no different. And uh, and the guy that you did not mention, Kyle, Kyle Oxley, is a very talented, talented young man. With Trey Ford, do you imagine him having more package work this season? Uh, well, we're just going to treat it just like a normal. Uh, he's a quarterback. He's not a, He's not necessarily just a package guy. I mean, he's a guy that come in and run your offense. Uh, he got he got the start last year in Hamilton, the first time that he got the opportunity to be a starter in the league, and he went over to Hamilton on the road and won the game. So, I mean, he's a, uh, he's a good, solid quarterback. You went out and were aggressive in free agency, bringing in Eugene Lewis and Stephen Dunbar Jr. Why was it important for you to spend that much money at the receiver position? Well, I mean, you, you've got to you've got to give the uh, weapons to your quarterback. We've got a young quarterback that hadn't he's uh, he's done some some great things, and then he stubbed his toe at times. Uh, both of them have, but they've got the potential. And then if they can make strides, but you got to put people around them that can make plays for them. And, and the guy that you didn't mention there, Swerve. I mean, Swerve is as good a good a run after catch guy as that's going to be in the league. He's also going to be our return guy. So I mean, we've got a what we feel like a solid uh, solid group of receivers and guys that go get football for their quarterback. Another guy you went out and got in free agency was linebacker Kevin Francis. Yep. There been some reports he's out on Twitter saying he like to be traded or released. Can you give us any insight on that well, situation? Well, again, though, you know, we, uh, I'm not going to say anything today. I mean, Kevin's got his things going on. And again, we've got a policy with our organization and our president and CFO have, have come with a new policy and that's that's uh, their prerogative. Uh, they're above my pay grade. And so, uh, you know, Kevin and his agent, you know, they signed the contract and uh, we fully expect Kevin to be in camp. And, and uh, again, we want Kevin. We want Kevin with our group. He's a, I've known him since he was at North Carolina A&T, you know, and so worked him out in my hometown. So I've known Kevin a long time and I hope that uh, we can get all this worked out and put behind us. Have you personally had conversations with him? Yeah, since we've talked to him twice, you know, since all, I'm, I'm not going to sit there and just rehash and rehash. I mean, uh, but uh, hopefully over the next little bit, we can get all that resolved and put behind us. How confident are you that he will be with the team next uh, year? You know what, I mean, we've already had enough conversation about it. Uh, this is the last thing I'll say about it. We want Kevin. Uh, I've known Kevin since he was in college, switched him to defense and allowed him to, to develop his game in Saskatchewan. So we're hoping to have him in our uniform this year and he'll make us a better football team. You're down one draft pick this season because you traded a second round pick yep. for a guy in Woodley Apollon who was a fifth round pick last season. That raised a few eyebrows around the league. Why did you think that move was important? Well, uh, you've watched as much film as I had on this year's draft, especially uh, at the linebacker position. You see the importance of a guy like Woodley. I was at the HBCU game for, for four days there in New Orleans. And uh, when I looked down, I didn't know who the kids were. Uh, and I was like, man, who's that number 33? I pulled out my little HBCU list. And sure enough, it was it was Woodley. And so uh, I'm sitting there watching him. and, and I knew that he has, I know what his brother brought to our football team last year. And it was tragic that uh, he started the first, the first play of the, the defensive play of the year. He's our starter. And, uh, you know, when you've got Adam Konar and some other talented guys and he was able to be the starter, that tells you how good he's played. Um, and, and I can't say that the, the first few days with our wood, our Apollon, I was sitting there questioning, but then all of a sudden that light switch went off and I'm like, wow, this kid's got real potential. And so uh, to be able to add his brother to the mix, I think is a good good thing for our football team. And that's really all that matters is our football team does. It's been noted that you're the type of guy who, who likes a certain type of prospect. What does a Chris Jones draft pick look like? Well, I mean, you know, certainly, you know, I was involved very heavily in the analytics down, down with the Browns. I mean, we're looking for guys with length. We're looking for the parameters, the, the length, the speed, the jumping ability, change of direction. Uh, you got to be able to cover a kick. Uh, certainly those are the things that, that we're looking for in a defensive player, a guy that can play more than one position. And, uh, and versatility in our league on a small roster, I think, is extremely valuable. Awesome. Thanks right. for your time, Chris. Thank you.